Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. Let's install TensorFlow Cura's on a Macintosh. Now this will be using CPU only. You really can't use a GPU on a Mac for TensorFlow, not with ex not without extraordinary effort. Macs do not support NVIDIA GPUs, and TensorFlow has also dropped GPU support for the Mac a while a while back. Now there is very very new capabilities in the M1 Macintoshes that use the ARM chip that Apple has developed. This is very very new and I have not gone through this yet I don't own an M1 Mac currently but this is something I might cover more in the future anybody have experience with M1 TensorFlow definitely post in the comments I'd love to hear about what your results have been so let's get to it okay what I am going to suggest you do is download and install Miniconda this is available on the Mac get the latest version you can 3.8 3.8 is also so what we'll be installing TensorFlow for because it supports that version on the Macintosh. I'm going to get the PKG. That's a little bit easier to install than the Bash. Bash is pretty similar to how you install it on Linux. So you may want to go down that route, but the instructions will be a little bit different. You can install the full-blown Anaconda if you want to. I tend to prefer the more minimalistic, just the packages that I need. That way I know what I've installed into this, this beast. But if you want to do Anaconda, that's, that's certainly fine as well. You would just go to the Anaconda page that looks just like this and download it. I'm going to open that package file that I just got. Click continue. Continue. License. Yes, I agree. Installation type. I'm going to let it install to its default location, which is perfectly fine by me. Click install. It needs to authenticate me. And now it's going through the installation. This may take a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. Okay, this is installed. I'll go ahead and click load. Might as well move it to the trash. So now I'm going to go back to the installation instructions that I had here that we were following from. I am going to go to a terminal prompt. Now Mac did switch from bash to K shell. So you can, or Z shell actually. So if you do PS, it'll show you that you are on Z shell. If you're not on Z shell, you'll probably want to switch to that. There's other articles on how to do that. If you bought a recent Mac, it'll be already on Z shell. But be aware of that. That can cause you some, some issues. Also, make sure that you have the latest, the version of Python that you expect. Python minus minus version 3.8.5. If you are getting something else and you went through the package installer, if you're on 2.7, which is the ancient version of Python that Mac come with, reboot. Hopefully that will help. If not, then you need to get the path updated. And there's articles on the internet about how to do that. But really, Python Miniconda should automatically install that for you. So I'm going to do conda install minus y Jupyter. And this will get the Jupyter notebook installed for me. I'm going to fast forward through this. This sometimes takes a bit. Okay, we've got Jupyter. So next part, we're going to basically use this TensorFlow YML file that I make available, and we're going to just download that file. So I'm going to open it up. You can see it here. This may be different later on if I've updated just a few things in here to later versions, but have not needed to re-record the video yet. So I am going to just put it in my user's jheaton directory. You'll put it in your user's directory. That's not the best place to put it, but it'll work for this example. I suggest removing it after you're done. So here I'm in users, Jay Heaton, or whoever you happen to be, and I'm going to go back and we're going to do this command here. Copy it. That command might be different. I, I don't think I'll change that command, but uh, always copy and paste. Don't copy it right from, from YouTube. And I'm going to go ahead and run that. This will create for me a TensorFlow environment. That way I can have a different version in that environment of 
of Python than I actually have in my host environment. And it just keeps everything nice and organized. That way you're not going to accidentally damage your TensorFlow environment when you're installing, say, other packages in Python. So here we're installing it. This will get us TensorFlow, at least as of January 2021, when I'm recording this, it'll give you Python 3.8 and TensorFlow 2.4, which is what we're using for the current semester of this course. Now, this tends to take a little bit, so I'm going to fast forward through this. All right, now we can go ahead and activate this environment. Conda activate TensorFlow. And this is what you'll want to do every time you're going to bring up a Jupyter Notebook just to make sure you're in that environment. So I did that, Conda activate. Now I'm going to do Conda install in B Conda. This lets me actually add this environment to a Jupyter Notebook. And there we go. This might take a little bit, so I will fast forward. We'll proceed, yes, and fast forward. Okay, this is important. We will register our environment, otherwise it will not show up in Jupyter. So I'm going to copy that whole big long command. I don't want to type that. Make sure you have the 3.8 be whatever version you have in the in the TensorFlow file. I'll update those, but copy and paste here because this will probably be a later version later in the year or beyond. I, I usually get about a year's worth of mileage, sometimes six months before I have to re-record these videos. So I'm going to paste and we'll have that. Okay, that is very quick. Now we're going to test Jupyter. And I give you some code here that you're going to want to try out in Jupyter. So I'm going to go Jupyter Notebook and it will launch Jupyter Notebook for me right in my browser. All right, I'm going to create a new Python 3.8 TensorFlow and there it is. You can see it's up there and it should be running. You shouldn't see kernel failed or something horrible like that. I'm going to copy this code here and we're going to run this. This might take a little bit of time on first execution, so I will fast forward that. All right, this is awesome. Kara is 2.4, Python 3.8 and TensorFlow 2.4. So that is what I was very much expecting. GPU is not available, but hey, it's a Macintosh. Uh, GPUs are great, but just not an option that is really available on a Mac, be it a laptop or a desktop. Thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to this channel so that you can stay up to date with this course and continue your deep learning journey.